The rebel gets results. The prime minister's bureaucrats in the Privy Council office have just been slammed by the information commissioner. And it's thanks to complaints by little old us. I've got some news that you won't hear about in the mainstream media for a couple of different reasons. The first reason is because the news is the consequence of the hard work that we do here at the Rebel every single day and secondarily this news is immensely damaging to the Liberals in the lead up to the election and to their promises of a more open and transparent government. And so of course this is not high on the mainstream media priority list of things to report on. Let me tell you what's going on. I'm going to read from a ruling by the Information Commissioner of Canada. Now, this is a person tasked with making sure that federal records retention and release rules are being followed and not abused by partisan bureaucrats. It reads, publicly available information on exempt staff travel should be disclosed. We investigated eight complaints about the decision by the Privy Council Office, the PCO, to refuse to disclose travel expenses for members of the Prime Minister's staff who are not part of regular public service, known as exempt staff. PCO claimed that the records constituted personal information. During the investigation, we learned from PCO that when any records that fall within the scope of a request related to exempt staff contain personal information, it treats all the records as personal information. The commissioner was not satisfied with this approach for several reasons. Parts of some of the withheld records in one of the complaints contained no personal information. PCO did not consider disclosing any information it could reasonably sever from the exempted information under Section 25 of the Act, a mandatory requirement. PCO had already released some information in response to each of the requests, which conflicted with its stated approach of treating the records as a single whole when the request concerns the personal information of exempt staff. PCO's approach failed to take into account the purposes of the Act, including that exceptions to the right of public access to information should be limited and specific. The Commissioner was also not satisfied with PCO's refusal to disclose the requested information. Some of the information in one of the complaints did not meet the definition of quote unquote personal information in the Privacy Act, based on which institutions may withhold information. As for the information that did qualify as personal, much of it was publicly available and should have been disclosed. Moreover, PCO did not provide sufficient details to show that it had sought the consent of the individuals to whom the personal information belongs to disclose that information or had considered disclosing some or all of it in the public interest. The commissioner determined that these eight complaints were well-founded. She wrote to the Prime Minister and formally recommended that he direct the PCO to disclose the information that she considered not to be personal information. She also recommended that the PCO reconsider whether it could disclose any publicly available personal information. Despite having been granted an extension, the Prime Minister did not respond to the Commissioner's recommendations. Consequently, we concluded all eight complaints were well-founded but not resolved and closed them without the benefit of a response. As a result, the complainant did not receive the information the Commissioner recommended PCO release. This ruling is directly related to complaints about withheld information that we filed here at The Rebel about Justin Trudeau's former Principal Secretary Gerald Butts. These are just some of our access to information requests about Gerald Butts that came back unresponsive. For example, back in 2016, we asked for copies of Gerald Butts' expenses for his trip to Davos. The Privy Council withheld nearly all of that information from us. As you can see here, we exercised our right to complain about the withholding of that information. So, 
a re-examination of the records was then conducted. And through that review, it was determined that information formerly withheld could be released to us. That's how we found out that Gerald Butt spent $706 on meals and incidentals at Davos. And even still, the government indicated to us that certain information would continue to be withheld. In 2016, it took us nearly two years to get a response about Gerald Butt's trip to London, Paris, and Malta. And much of that was withheld again. You can see we again exercised our right to appeal. And then the government released that Butts spent $921 on meals and incidentals. But as you can see on page four of the document package, they still withheld 10 pages of information. So we appealed that decision and did get those additional 10 pages from the Privy Council. In this access to information response we filed back in 2017, we asked for copies of all the expenses, including supporting documents such as receipts submitted by or for Gerald Butts, the Principal Secretary to the Prime Minister since November 4th, 2015. The Privy Council determined the information we requested may not be disclosed to us at all. As pointed out by the Information Commissioner, the nearly exclusive excuse being used by the Privy Council office to block disclosure was that asking for any of it fell under the definition of personal information. But it's not personal if you're spending public money on it. The Prime Minister's office was using a loophole in information law to protect Justin Trudeau's closest confidant, a man with his snout in the public trough. But this isn't the first time that the rebel has gotten these sorts of results and confirmation back from the information commissioner back in 2016 and 2017. We uncovered a liberal partisan working in the public service who was using his government time to do partisan organizing on behalf of the Ontario Liberals. As Andrew Lawton reported at the time, the man in question is Val Trudeau, no relation, who the government database lists as the director of Shared Services Canada. He's also the president of the Glengarry Prescott Russell Provincial Liberal Riding Association. From his government email address, he was receiving partisan materials from the Ontario Liberals. Andrew even found a chain of emails where he was helping organize the annual general meeting of the Writing Association from his government email address, and he sent those emails in the middle of a workday, Tuesday at 2.12 p.m. That rebel investigation prompted an information commissioner investigation that revealed an attempted cover-up when that liberal partisan public sector employee tried to delete all of his incriminating emails. Let me show you the information commissioner's finding. The investigation revealed that on May 17th, the employee was tasked to respond to the request and advised of their obligations under the Act, including that all of their emails needed to be provided and none were to be deleted as of the date of the request. On May 26th, the employee provided 12 pages of records to the ATIP office for processing. On June 13th, the email was informed the release package would be sent to the requester that day. On June 13th and 14th, the SSC, or Shared Service Canada, President's Office initiated a backdoor security search, including a search of backup tapes in relation to this request. On July 26th, the SSC retrieved deleted email records through its backdoor search. SSC determined 398 pages of deleted email records were responsive to the request and provided these to the requester in September 2016. In its investigation, the OIC agreed the 398 pages of deleted email records were responsive to the request. SSC determined these email records were deleted between June 22nd and July 11th after the response had been sent to the requester. In May 2017, the commissioner referred this matter to the Attorney General of Canada. That's a criminal investigation. We uncovered evidence of a crime here. This is a scandal one more time. And the information commissioner has sided with us 
one more time to show the liberal willingness to break laws and abuse the public sector for partisan gain. The information commissioner's ruling shows that even after she told the prime minister to release the information to us, the prime minister refused to direct his staff to do it. The mainstream media won't cover how we just demonstrated that the prime minister's office was not complying with federal records keeping legislation by blocking our investigation into Justin Trudeau's close friend, confidant and former employee, Gerald Butts. This is real journalism we're doing here. We are investigators and skeptics, not fangirls and press secretaries. Trudeau's government thinks that handing out cash to failing media companies amounts to supporting the free press, while at the same time they block journalists and access requests when they think no one is watching what they're doing. Journalism means holding the government to account for this and everything else they think they can get away with. Everything else is just repeating and not reporting, and we're still the public pays for it. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunry. What you just saw there is an example of the daily work that I do here at the Rebel. Myself and the rest of my team, we investigate Justin Trudeau's liberals in a way that you won't see done in the mainstream media. And because of that, we need your help to get the word out. But the best way for you to help us do that doesn't cost you a dime. All you need to do is like and share our work and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.